I say all things about transportation, I mean all things of transportation, big time. For instance, today I am here with co-host Jim Pate at the Augusta Regional Airport getting prepared to watch the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds perform. Jim, this is really exciting. Another day where we're all going to learn something. Yes, we yes. will, and see some very exciting things. I look forward to that. And we'll also be answering some automotive questions, talking about all things aviation, including the Thunderbirds Air Show. And so if it's Saturday, May 13th or 14th, 2023, and you are anywhere near Augusta, come on out and watch the Thunderbirds perform, along with a long list of other great performances. And you can also give us a call with a car question, or today you can also ask an aviation question, and that's at 800-224-9090. And that's 800 800- 224-9090. You can also watch us live on Facebook, and you can uh, also watch us live on YouTube. And the reason I mentioned you can uh, give us a call about things to do with aviation also, and this aviation air show, or this, this air show that we have here, is because we have a great guest with us here. We have Chris Dorado, and Chris... Welcome to the CNC Auto Show. Well, thank you very much. It's great to be here uh, in Augusta, and you know this is the Augusta Air Show. Uh, so we're looking forward to putting on a great show today. And uh, the weather looks like it's going to cooperating, as Brian Lilly, the Air Show Director, always says. It looks like Mother Nature attended the planning meeting, so uh, and cooperated. So uh, we're looking forward to having a great show today and, and, and putting on a putting on a uh, exciting performance for all the fans uh, in, in Augusta in the Augusta area. Oh, this will be a huge amount of fun. I'm a, I'm, I'm a very big Thunderbirds fan. Of course, I was in the Air Force. Uh, wonderful experience for me, and I love everything to do with aviation, everything to do with uh, fast items <laughs> and, and, and loud <laughs> engines. And the Thunderbirds fit in with all of that. You're going to get a lot of that today, a lot of noise, uh, a lot of uh, oohs and ahs from the fans because uh, – you know these these great aviators, uh, and again, it's not just the Thunderbirds. We have the you know F-16 Viper demo team at a Shaw Air Force Base in, in South Carolina. Um, they'll be here, and uh, they're they're going to put on a great show. Uh, we have Rebel, who's the uh, that's her call sign, the female pilot for the F-16 Viper demo team. Uh, so they're going to be uh, uh, loud and boisterous, shall we say? Yeah, Jim, you all set and ready to roll? I watched. Uh a video of the practice a couple days ago, so it looks, even just looking on a computer screen, it's pretty exciting. I can only imagine the real person experience. It's going to be neat. Yeah, I mean, it, it's amazing. You know, you look up in the sky at this, uh, this, you know, the stage is in the sky, obviously, and, uh, you know, you wonder how these, these planes uh, do what they do, but, uh, you know, again, talented aviators, they know what they're doing up there, so, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, like I said, the fans are going to be in for a treat today. Chris, will, will some of the airplanes be on display, or will you have things there that you'll be able, that people will be able to walk around and look at different airplanes? There will be static displays. Um, among them, the F, F, F-16s will be uh, right out there on the show footprint. Oh, the Viper. So, well, a form of it. <laughs> yeah, a form so, of the Viper. Uh, yeah, so, uh, but there'll be some uh, feely, touchy type of uh, planes out there, and uh, uh, you know, I think uh, it's going to be a great day. We're we're very excited as the, as the show management company to be here in Augusta and uh, bringing back a show, uh, an air show that hasn't been here in 20 years. So <laughs> it's been a long time. People are starved for the for this kind of entertainment. I think. Chris, I had a gentleman, Don Rogers, and he wanted me to ask this question. <laughs> uh, he also said that it's been a long time since we had air shows in Augusta. Uh, is this something that could become more of a uh, regular event for us? Well, we're certainly hopeful of that. Um, you know, we're, uh, we're looking forward to an extended time period here uh, in Augusta putting on this show. So, uh, you know, that we, we have to do the first one, shall we say, yeah. and make sure we uh, get it right. So, uh, and we will. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm looking at uh, off in the distance, our air boss, George Klein, of course, is, uh, is uh, overseeing this uh, radio operation right now. So, uh, but he's he's a busy guy, and he'll be putting on the pilot's briefing here uh, 
very, very soon. So Maybe we'll uh, talk him into joining us sometime this morning. <laughs> we'll work on it. We'll see if we can do yeah. it. He's a busy guy right now. Yeah, but. we'll see how that goes. I, I imagine he is. Now, if someone was waking up this morning and they wanted to, uh, they were interested in coming to the air show, would they still be able to get in and get you, tickets? Here's, here's the deal. Um, you have to have do that online uh, before you get here. There are no tickets sold here at, at the show. Mm -hmm. So that's imperative that people understand that you can't just come. It's not like going to a baseball game or something where you could buy a ticket at the gate. That's not going to be done here. You have to do it online in advance. And um, so, you know, uh, but, uh, you know, to go online, AugustaAirShow.com is your best place to see about ticket availability as well as, uh, view, you know, viewing ticket options. Right. This, there, are, there are various seating and accommodations within the ticket array so it's it's not just one size fits all you can pick how much fun you want to have that's exactly right and uh you know if you want the true vip experience uh, there's some opportunity there as well so yeah, uh, or, ge or general mission hmm. so you have that you have a, like you said you have a few different levels yeah you can rent a great air show area actually if you want to you can you can and uh you know, I, I, again, there's. Uh, I know you're going to ask me a lot of questions about chairs and whatnot, but you know, the best source of information um, is the is the gustaairshow.com. There's a frequently asked questions uh, uh, section that you can hit on, and uh, it'll tell you about whether you can bring chairs and coolers and you know, sun umbrellas, etc. So, uh, but obviously, the recommendation, uh, given the weather uh, conditions as we speak, uh, I would. Highly recommend sunglasses and suntan lotion. <laughs> yeah, that, that right. just improves the experience when you bring your sunglasses. Yes, uh, uh, to an event like this, and and some suntan lotion because even though it uh, it don't look like you would burn, you will burn. That is correct, and it's going to be uh, I guess relatively hot from what I gather. So obviously, uh, uh, staying hydrated is going to be a very important uh, fact, and you know water water will be available out there. So uh, make sure you're hydrated. And a camera with the best zoom lens you can get. You got that right. You yeah, got one that, one right. that can handle motion. Yeah, yeah, and and be yeah be be ready to move the move the camera quickly. Okay, so. and I imagine food will be available. There'll be places to buy food out there. There's there are food vendors. So uh -huh. uh, and uh, you know so it, it's going to be a total experience. You know I, we talk about air shows being family friendly. And, uh, and, and, and it is, they are, you know, we, we encourage families to come out and it could be an educational experience for kids. Um, you know, their parents could tell them, you know, what these aviators are doing, specifically the military performers who they're out there protecting our freedom every day. So uh, it's very patriotic in nature air shows. And, uh, you know, you're going to see the, to kind of tip off, tip it off a little bit. The SOCOM paracommandos, uh, at a McDill air force base in Tampa, they, uh, they're the parachute team of, uh, made up of different military branches, and they're going to fly in with the American flag. And, and, and I've, always, I've said this you know, for days now. It's really a goosebump moment when they come in with the American flag. It's, it's, it's really an amazing yeah. experience. This is a very patriotic event, yeah. and, and, and also it's a, it's a time to show the love for your country. Yeah. It is. It's a, it's a you know, wrap, wrap yourself in the American flag yeah. uh, type of event. And, uh, you know, so we hope fo folks come out and do that very thing. Okay. I, uh, Chris, you, you hadn't been on the show before, but one thing that we do during the show is we throw out a tick tip quiz for people. Oh, boy. And they answer, and they get this huge prize. It's, I mean, it, and it's that's okay. You don't have to answer it. I, yeah. Well, if I could try, <laughs> you but can. I probably would get it wrong. That's for yeah. sure. But, well. it, but it's, kind of a, it's kind of a big deal, really. Yeah. Okay. Uh, people win a, they, they win a coffee mug. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and, and sometimes a shirt. Mason's been known to throw a shirt in there. And, of course, the, um, the tech tip quiz is Scooter has a 1945 Mustang that his father restored. You may not have heard of a 1945 Mustang, but Scooter not only has one, but he uses it for trips all around the country. How many 1945 Mustangs were built? If you know the answer, give us a call, and we will be right back after this. <laughs> you back to the CNC Auto Show. I'm Eric Clements here with co-host Jim Pate, and we are live on remote at the Augusta Regional Airport. Looking forward to watching the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds perform. And if you have a question about 
your car, truck, SUV, or aviation, or the air show, or if you have a answer to our tech tip quiz, you give us a call. The number is 800-224-9090. I'm here with Chris, and Chris is the director of the uh, public, public relations. Public relations. <laughs> I had that. <laughs> of, the, of the air show that we have today, that's the Augusta Air Show. And we have been uh, mentioning some very good tips about that. And we have some phone calls. So let's go over to the next caller. And welcome to the CNC Auto Show. What can we help you with? I wanted to ask Chris a question. Absolutely. He's right here with me. All right, Chris. Yes, sir. I noticed that they downed all the black hot. Black Hawk helicopters. Is that an equipment issue or is that a training issue? Well, uh, you know what? I, I wouldn't want to get into that with because that's a military question, you know. Um, it, it's and, and unrelated to the air show, I might add. So, um, so I wouldn't want to get into yeah. that. That is a good question, but, though. Very interesting. Yep. Let me try to take tip quiz, Aaron. Uh, you gotta, uh, you gotta be still. Don't move. And you know this is kind of a big deal. So let me read the uh, let me read the question again, and that is Scooter has a 1945 Mustang that his father restored. You may not have heard of a 45 Mustang, but Scooter not only has one, but he uses it for trips all around the country. How many 1945 Mustangs were built? And now, what is your first name again? Billy. Billy. This is Billy from North Augusta. Billy, all eyes yep. are on you. We're looking for you to answer today's tech tip quiz. What is the day's answer? The, the 1945 Mustang is an airplane, an aircraft that we built for World War II. And I'm going to say we probably built 3,000 of them. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Let me put that in front of all the judges. The judges are looking, and they're going through paperwork, and they're, they're rattling everything. Let's see what they say. Thank you. Oh, wow. Oh, they're going crazy in here. And see what we do. Uh, I know it looks like we're just pushing a button when that happens. No, but the, actually, all we're doing is pushing a button to signal the crowd. That's it. They're there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going, they're going absolutely crazy. You're absolutely right. The Mustang that Scooter owns is a P-51 Mustang. And I'm not sure if it, uh, how many were actually built uh, of the 90 of the 1945 Mustangs, but I do know that roughly 15,000 P51 Mustangs were built, and we lost around 2,500 of them during World War II. But they are they're still around 100 of them in flyable condition, uh, but they are just an absolutely yeah. awesome airplane, and they played a big part in the success that we had. In and World War II, you're absolutely right. A lot of others were sold to other countries as years went by after that. But uh, beautiful airplane. Absolutely beautiful. So, this Can is... Can I ask Chris another question? Uh, do what now? This, this, is, this is from the old time. Uh, this is from old plane, so maybe he can answer this. Uh -huh. How long did it take them to figure out how they could shoot a gun through a propeller of an airplane without tearing off the propeller? <laughs> <laughs> is this a trivia question? No. I, I have no idea. Well, I, I wouldn't. I don't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, if you know that, you tell me. <laughs> you know, I did read an article having to do with that one time, and and of course it was. I didn't forgot the uh, the person who actually solved that issue, but it had to do with the timing uh, mechanism of that. Jim, do you know more on that subject? It sounds like a good question. No. Okay, I, you got us on to, that one. But uh, but here's what I normally do. After somebody asks something like that, I go back and research it. So I will know the next time you ask. You coming Thank out you. to the Thank air show, so Billy? Hey, I'm going to try to get out there. It's a beautiful day. Um, you know, I took chemo, so I can't be in the sun too much. But that sunblock 70 works. So I'll be out there a little while. That's a good deal. You're going you're gonna to see a great show. Trust me. Yep. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Eric. Yep. Hey, Thank Billy, you. we appreciate the call. And we are at 
Augusta Regional Airport for the Augusta Air Show. Chris Dorado's here with me. Co-host Jim Pate is here with me. And we are talking about different tips on being able to come to the show. We're also answering aviation questions. And we're asking other questions. Uh, we're answering automotive questions and aviation questions. And we, uh, Chris... Uh, as far as the schedule goes, what time do some of the events start? Well, uh, and Jim's got it in front of him, too. But, uh, you know, we're going to start off with, uh, at 1130 with the uh, SOCOM Paracommandos bringing in the American flag. And, mm. and then uh, we're off and running at that point. Uh, you mentioned Scooter. Uh, that his, his, that's his nickname. Scott Yoke is his real name, <laughs> formal mm -hmm. name, uh, who will be uh, piloting the P-51 Mustang. And... And interestingly enough, rather than going through the whole schedule this second, but yeah, we're, we're just to give you a synopsis, we're, we'll go from the P-51, and then we'll do a, a Hilo demo with the Georgia State Patrol. Greg Kuntz, who's a, uh, in his decathlon, he'll be doing an aerobatic performance. Uh, the Sky Soldiers will be doing uh, some a Hilo demonstration, and uh, then we. But to, to the to the point about the P-51 Mustang. They'll actually, uh, he'll come back, Scooter will come back and do what's called a heritage flight with the Viper, mm. uh, F-16 Viper demo uh, oh. folks. And um, it, it, it's really heartwarming to see that because it's a, a past and present scenario for the Air Force. And to see these two planes flying side by side, it, it, it's just amazing. It, it, it's literally a, 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 a photo opportunity. Wow, and that's what I was thinking, yeah. to actually see a P-51 flying with an F-16. It's, it's amazing. It really is. Wow. And they do a, they do, they'll do a few of what I call laps. <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. that's my auto racing background coming through there. But um, they'll, they'll do some uh, passovers in, in a variety of directions. So, uh, you know, it, it's something that everybody, if, whoever's coming out to the show, you know, you're going to want to have your camera ready for that because that's, that's an awe, awestruck moment. Wow. I know I'm looking forward to that. Okay. We, are, we, uh, we need to touch down or do a quick <laughs> touch and go. <laughs> yep. And then we're going to pick up a passenger yeah, on the call this we'll, when we yes, come back. Yes, we'll, we'll pick up a passenger. We'll be going to the next caller right after so we return with there. more of the CNC Auto Show. And I thought I might ask Chris that question uh, before we go to the phone calls, what um, what is airshow.com? What's what's that about? Well, it's actually air.show. Air.show. <laughs> okay. Air.show.com. Um, we have a, a, a tour that we're doing, the company that uh, is staging the Augusta Air Show. Um, we have a, a destination-oriented tour. It's called the, the air.show tour. It's a seven-show tour. Um, and meant to be for going to destination-oriented places. For example, we've been to Cocoa Beach, Florida already for a show. We went to Fort Lauderdale a couple weeks ago. We're here in Augusta, of course, the golf capital of the world. And then um, we head up to Ocean City, Maryland uh, next month, uh, up to uh, the New York Air Show uh, in Orange County, New York, about uh, an hour north of the city. Uh, in the, in June, and then we finish up the tour in October. We have a little bit of a break. Uh, we we finish up the tour in October uh, at the uh, Atlanta Air Show, which is really in the Peachtree City, and um, and then finish up at Orlando Sanford uh, Airport in October. So it's a seven show tour, and you can you know you can go on air dot show dot com, and uh, and see all the sites and and uh, get your tickets. So that's air dot show. And this is their stop in Augusta. So those of you in this area that want to come see a wonderful air show having to do with the Thunderbirds, a lot of other great performers that will be here, uh, come on in. You still have time. But before you get here, go online first. Get your tickets because they won't be selling them at the gate. And the, are those tickets sold, however, at the AugustaAirShow.com website? Correct. Only. Yes. Not, yes. not the air Dot. Well, you can, you can go in either way. Actually. Either way. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. But, it, but if you want to go on the, the actual show site, that's probably the, the most direct link. Got it. Okay. Ready to go to a call? Yeah. All right. We're going to do it. Here Bunch we go. Of. Okay. Welcome to the CNC Auto Show. And what can we help you with? Hey, how you doing? Doing very well. Appreciate the call. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, 
251, I'm a big fan of that airplane, just a little short tidbit on it. It's, it's, you, I know you would be interested in it, Aaron. Uh, I had about a 50 year in commercial aviation with airlines, and the last 20 were spent at Augusta Aviation as the director of operations for the wow. charter park. We went on a trip about three years ago down a little town in south central Georgia, and I can't remember, I think it was in Coffee County, I'm trying to look it up. But they have an F-81 or something, 83, I can't remember, but that is a twin-engine Mustang uh-huh. that was built in 1946 of the prototype, and they flew about three of them. And that airplane, I saw it fly down in this little south Georgia town after they rebuilt it, and if you're interested in buying it, it's on sale for $12 million. So I thought you might be interested in that. Is it cash only? <laughs> I'll charge for the credit card. Uh, he, 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 he would probably finance some of that. <laughs> you know, I guess the uh, uh, a twin engine would be a good try, but it would actually be very hard to improve on the P-51 at that time, the way it was built. and. It's a little bit like well, a exactly 65 I, Ford Mustang. It's just, it's almost impossible to, to build one that is, uh, yeah. that, it, that, that at that time that could be, you really couldn't imagine it to do much better. The P-51 kind of fits into that category. Absolutely beautiful airplane. And there's some guess, still used in races also. Well, they use them at their, uh, at Reno Air Races oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. different things are. like that. Uh, yeah. Beautiful airplane. I did have the opportunity to fly in one many years ago. Uh, the local guy here, Tony Mohair, I don't know if you remember him or not, but he bought one, and I had an opportunity to fly when I was about 20. Yeah. I mean, 75 now, because that was a long time ago. Yeah. But uh, you can look that airplane up. Basically, all they did was they took, like, the left wing off one and the right wing off the other and put them together so the, the nacelles, you know, each pilot was sitting, there was two pilots, and each pilot was sitting behind the engine just like he would be in one engine. Wow, that's but amazing. one guy didn't have a wing on his right side, the other guy didn't have one on his left side. So, Absolutely you amazing. Look it up, you'd be interested. In well, we sure do appreciate and your call you and, and sharing that with us. Yeah, and I, well, one other thing, I don't know who did it either, but that shooting through propeller was, they got that going in World War One, so it, it, it started then. You know, uh -huh. with the Fokkers and those airplanes. Yeah, I remember that story having to do with that, but I wouldn't want to say anything because I, I it, it's been a long time since I've read that. Mm -hmm. But that entices me to go back and uh, and look at that again because, it, it, from what I understand, it was a very interesting story. So we sure to appreciate well, that. Think of that Mustang when you get it. Huh? Yes, sir. Y'all enjoy the day. Oh, thank you. Okay, the number to call eight hundred two two four nine zero nine zero. Uh, what would um, what would all of you think about a car question? Well, you, you can handle that one. Well, <laughs> <laughs> although I was in the, as you know, I was in the car, uh, auto industry PR world yeah. for a number of years before I got into the uh, air show business. So. Well, we'll find out what kind of question we have here. Let's see what we got. Uh, let's see here, and welcome to the CNC Auto Show. And what can we help you with? I have a 2012 uh, Denali Duramax, and I'm having PO, I think, 381 code come up about the glow plugs. But um, from what I've been seeing, it's saying that it could, you know, either be one of the glow plugs, all the glow plugs. It could be the module. And I just don't want to sit there and change parts and change parts and spend a lot of money and then come find out it's, it's not even what I'm looking for. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. And if, if all you're looking at is the code itself and making a decision on what part you're going to replace, that's exactly what you'll do. You could replace many, many parts and never hit the right one. Well, what I would recommend doing, and you, you can do this, but it is time consuming. You do have to have some special equipment. Uh, one of the things that you want to do is go in and go follow a chart that's on that code. It has to do with uh, doing different things that might say check voltage on uh wire pin number two uh, and it'll actually show pictures of where the wire is pictures of the pin uh, and then you'll follow this chart now if, if there's a chance on that particular code it might boil down to saying it needs a module because that wouldn't be unusual 
Uh, but if you did the module, I also would recommend doing a resistance check on all the glow plugs because if you put a new module on there and, the, and one of the glow plugs is shorted out, the smoke will come out. And that smoke is the magic that made that box work. And the genie's out of the bottle, so it no longer does anything. So uh, I, it, you may consider, because of that reason, uh, investing in a diagnostic test, a technician that has all the information, all the equipment. And, and I don't know for sure that you don't have all that. Uh, but if you don't, you may come out ahead to do that, and that technician say, well, it does need a module or it does need this, and I did do the resistance check to make sure that it's not going to happen again. Um, just uh, that's the more. Right, do I have to take out the? Do I have to take out the glow plugs individually no. to check them? No, there's wiring. You can. There's a wiring harness that you'll be able to go and check each one at a particular wiring harness. But have that okay. done because well, I have seen you. many sure people. I've seen many people do just what you're talking about and, and uh, change a lot of parts. And cars have so many parts on them now, you could change them uh, for weeks and still not hit the right one. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, uh, yeah, diagnostics would pay yeah, off. So it gets kind of expensive. Yeah, yeah, especially dealing with uh, diesel now. But, yeah. Uh, they're very expensive. Yeah, some diagnostic money spent is a lot cheaper than the parts oh, cannon. Right. Yeah, sharp, sharpen twice, cut once. How's yeah. that? <laughs> All right. Hey, we appreciate the call very much. All right. The number to call, 800-224-9090. If you got a question about your car, your truck, your SUV, or a, or the Augusta Air Show or any of the air shows that's going on around the country, uh, that's, um, that's with Air.Show. Um, they're doing a tour around the country, and, and one of the places they're stopping here is Augusta. And they're having a show today. That'll be the Thunderbirds will be flying today. And, Chris, tell us one more time what time the show will be starting. Uh, 1130. And uh, the Thunderbirds will be the uh, featured performer uh, at the end of the show. Uh, you'll see them about 230-ish. So, hopefully, uh, you know, I just see it's gotten cloudy now. So, you know, come on. Clouds go away. So, we need to... Uh, Get the get clear skies and uh, have a great high show for the for the Thunderbirds later on. We will. Okay, we will uh, take a quick break. We'll be right back after these messages. Um, the, the guys, first of all, the Red Bull helicopter. You, <laughs> I I don't want to give off what they do, but you know, you, you're gonna you can't imagine what this helicopter does. I mean, it it's not your traditional <laughs> helicopter flight that they take. Um, they're doing rolls and spins, and uh, you, you know you can't imagine that they can do that. <laughs> you know, Chris, you just sit there I, in awe. From what I understand, the Red Bull helicopter does things that at one time was thought impossible. Yeah, it's it's to amazing. Be able to do with yeah, the and, and, you, and you know that you have it, you know, kind of scripted here, but a little barrel barrel rolls and loops and vertical climbs. I mean, this guy puts this helicopter through the paces yeah. <laughs> literally so uh, and then you have the the air force guys like red bull air force comes you know they have an aerobatic uh, plane and and then the guys who jump out of the out of the out of the plane with the the wings and fly through the air i mean it's 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 crazy um in fact they're uh, just as a as a sidelight they have a, a documentary uh com a film company uh, doing a, a a piece here uh, filming filming them here at the augusta air show so uh that's that's something to be seen down the road i won't tip off where it's going to be on or anything that's sort of a private deal but uh they're doing some uh filming here this weekend so um but you know and then we you know of course the thunderbirds we finish it off uh and then they're you know they they're who they are they're uh they're the uh, the best of the best so uh, from the air force but uh, one thing i did want to mention if you're coming out to the show and i am uh, jim and i were talking about this you know the the airport continues its operation um you know they have commercial flights coming in and out of here on a continual basis there are some arrivals and departures that are worked into the show schedule so don't be don't be thinking you know if you're out here at the show that you know, why do you see some Delta arrivals or American Airlines departures or whatever? That's worked into the schedule that, because this is a working airport. So we have to, you know, work with the folks here. So, so yeah, if you're expecting a loved one today on commercial aircraft, they're still going to come. They are. They are, uh, you know, hopefully they'll be on time. 
<laughs> but uh, that we can't that we can't control. But uh, uh, but they are going to be worked into the schedule, so don't be thrown by uh, the uh, commercial aircraft coming in and out of here during the show. And, and another another thing that you were talking about was the Red Bull uh, Air Force uh, with the airfoils that uh, that actually they're putting on a suit and they're actually able to fly through the air. Um, that's another thing at one time thought to be would be impossible. Yeah, they're and they're they're they're. Uh, I, I, let's put it this way: I'm 66 years old, and but even in my youth, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, I mean that's 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 crazy stuff, man. But uh-huh. uh, they they get it done. So well, uh, that that is a huge amount of training involved in, in when you're doing things like that, as far as uh, as, as far as flying in the wingsuit, and that's not something that everybody can do, mm-hmm. but. Uh, but with it, it is, it's just an, um, uh, a, a, a huge amount of training uh, to be able to do that and, uh, and guts. <laughs> well, and that's the thing about it, you know, and, and, you know, Thunderbirds included, obviously. But these pilots, you know, you can't just hop in these planes and not be fitness oriented. You know, you better know what you better be highly, uh, highly trained and not only to operate the plane, but be able to handle the g loads and, and you know these guys these, they're unbelievable the guys and gals i might add they're unbelievably fit and uh, and they have to be they have no choice yeah that was some of the questions that i had planned to ask uh, if we have the opportunity to talk to some of the uh some of the pilots is things to do with g forces on their body how they prepare for the 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 extra load that they're going to put on their body are their exercises that, that they do things that they do to prepare for that and does it uh how does that affect you once uh once you're done i mean with that it does it uh does it make you tired or or if you handle that many loads well i i could tell I mean, you uh, yeah yesterday uh and not to sound uh, like i'm promoting something here but the uh, Thunderbirds have a hometown hero program that they uh, do at every show market we, they go into. And uh, they honor a, a somebody who's done something for the community uh, and done something outside the norm, if you will. And yesterday, the Thunderbirds flew the Richmond County School Systems Teacher of the Year, uh, Shakara Will- Willis. Uh, and I hope I get the name of the school right. CT Magnet Elementary School, I believe it's called. Mm-hmm. And uh, But to, to, to your point is... That she, of course, doesn't normally fly in the backseat of an F-16, and you know she. They took her up to about six and a half Gs, um, and they did some of the profile, their uh, performance profile with her. Not all of it, and um, you know she, she, you know she had to, she had to work yeah. <laughs> to to get through it. So, uh, but she had a great experience, and uh, you know we're glad that the show and the Thunderbirds were able to honor her yesterday with that with that flight in the F-16. Yeah, so that's some great things that they do uh, with the Air Dot Show Tour. In the Air Show Dot Tour, they, as they go into different communities, they provide a lot of uh, benefits for that community and try to help the different communities that they go into uh, with the shows. Chris, I wanted to say a few words about the Thunderbirds, uh, just so everyone will have a few details about what they'll be seeing. The Thunderbirds were formed in 1953, and they've been performing for over 60 years, from what I understand. That's correct. I mean, they, their history is uh, incredible. Um, you know, and they, you know, they they uh, they come up, come here, and they do the Delta formation. They have solos that fly. I mean, the, the speeds are incredible. You know, well over, uh, you know, uh, 700 miles an hour at times, and you know, so. Uh, but they're again. I, I say they're the best of the best, and uh, and they put on a tremendous performance. In fact, just as an aside, a couple of years ago they changed their whole demo, uh, and they used Disney uh, to help create the demo. Um, so they so that's something that you'll see here in Augusta for the first time, I think. Um, so it's it's a it's a brand still virtually a brand new demo for them. Yeah, and, and, and just to, just to give an idea of, of what they're doing now, the the F sixteen can fly Mach two fifteen hundred miles an hour, uh, but they do they do back off on the throttle a little bit for the show at seven hundred. Yeah, you so. don't want you don't want a lot of uh, car windows. Not to mention we're in this beautiful yeah. uh, aviation services uh, FBO here at Augusta Regional Airport. We don't want the windows busting out of here either. So. Uh-huh. Uh, 
Uh, so they, they keep it just under the speed of sound. And from what I understand, they get they can get down as low as doing some of these performances down to to a hundred feet off the ground at at, at somewhere five six seven hundred miles an hour, and and some of the performance the that they're doing out there, they're they're like somewhere around eighteen inches two yeah. foot uh, two foot. I think I think they, that happens in the uh, formation of six, doesn't it? That's right. Well, or the delta formation when they're when they're in the four four ship. Um, it's it's amazing, uh, you know. Again, and even and I understand get, when you do the six, that's even harder because oh. you've you've aggravated the uh, challenges by increasing it by two. Yeah, a little turbu two. turbulence, yeah. as they call it. But uh, you know, there's a wake in the air. But it it again, these they, they train and train and train. It's not like they just get up there and do it, you know, on a whim. Uh, they're constantly training to do this. So. They're, uh, they're 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 great. Some of the best of the best. They are. And, uh, you know, we had the, just as an aside, we had the Blue Angels, uh, U.S. Navy Blue Angels in Fort Lauderdale a couple weeks ago, not to mix apples and oranges here, but they are also the best of the best. So we, we have some great aviators in our military, believe me. And we, uh, the CNC Auto Show, we're wearing the red, white, and blue. And I tell you, uh, things like this make you so proud to be an American. And we need to prepare for landing. We'll add some fuel. We'll be back with another hour of flight very shortly i'm looking forward to seeing our second hour i also want to give a big thank you to our co-host jim pate show producer mason rogers and thank you chris for being here chris dorado is here with us and gave us a great update great, on the great, air great show. help great amount of information it's wonderful and thank you all Thanks. that tuned in and called into the cnc auto show we are talking about cars we're talking about aviation and we have a air show that will be going on this afternoon. And that will, if you want to know more about the air show, go to air.show.tour and go to the Augusta air show. And you'll be able to pick up a lot of information on what you need to do to get here. And of course you need to get your tickets online before coming out here. They, you won't be able to uh, get the, uh, get tickets at the gate. They sell those online. So encourage you to get dressed and get so and, and get those tickets and come on out to the Augusta Air Show. It's going to be great. I have Herbert Judon here with us here today, and Herbert is the executive director of the Augusta Regional Airport, and he uh, played a part in helping to bring this here. Him and his team. And Herbert, what? How did this come about? Well, I think it was probably about a year, year and a half ago, and and actually some of our aviation commissioners, uh, who had been here in the community for years, um, talked about the fact that we hadn't done this in over two decades, and they were very fond of the times that we had done this years back. Mm -hmm. So they they kind of birthed the idea with the staff and. Um, one of our commissioners actually reached out to the event company and we started doing a lot of research and looking at, we, we went and uh, looked at some other shows, including Peachtree City and did a lot of research and uh, we, we eventually got to this point, but yeah, it's a lot of, lot of work in the background. Well, with, with this, what, um, what's some of the other, the, the, what's some of the other things that Augusta Regional Airport does along with, we're having an air show today, what's some of the other things that they do uh, during the course of a year? Yeah, so we do a lot of events, and of course, events are not our core mission. Obviously, we are an, an airport, and, and the commercial service, the, FB, the business aviation is our core mission, but events are also important. So one of the, the things that I communicate to my staff is that the airport is a community asset and we want people to use the airport, to enjoy the airport, to do a myriad of events at the airport. Even, even if you don't fly, we want the community to partake and be a part of the airport, and, and especially young people. So throughout the year, we do several events. We did a 5K run back in March. We do pet adoptions. We do Santa fly-ins, um, meet a machine, um, boxing. The Augusta Boxing Club has, a, has a, a, a tournament here each year. So we, we do a bunch of events. We just want people to get out and enjoy and partake of the airport. Jim, do you have questions for Herbert? Well, I find it interesting that, as was mentioned in the previous hour, that you can run an air show and still run a commercial airport because the air show has a lot of folks that are out 
in the airstrip area, but it, as I look at the airport, they're on a runway that probably won't be used today for commercial aircraft, but they're out there. So you have to be aware of all of their needs and so forth while still accepting the commercial aircraft and, and then, of course, allowing them to depart on time. So it's uh, remarkable that you can put all that together and everybody's safe. The aerobatic aircraft goes someplace else while the commercial aircraft is coming and going, and then as soon as they leave, back to the show. So it's, it's a it's a bit of a juggling act, I'm sure, for the tower today. A little busier than usual up at the tower. Yeah. And I think um, what you say just goes to show all the coordination that's, that takes place. Um, obviously, the event company, they have an air boss that helps coordinate uh, a lot of the sequencing of the aircraft, the um, air traffic control. They've been partners in, in coordinating this, uh, the airport staff. So there's a lot of different players that are involved. but the uh, airlines and the airline station manager. So yes, it's very critical that we run, again, our core operation, that we're able to uh, land and depart uh, commercial aircraft and other things today. So yeah, a lot of coordination by a lot of people. Wow. And this is one of those airports, for those in the syndica syndicated uh, customer base, who might think of airports as always being these monstrous things with monorails and parking lots that take forever to get from the airport out to your car or vice versa. This is one of those delightful airports to use. It is, yeah. it is big enough to get you where you need to go with a number of cities, but it's just a peaceful place to come and go from. You can see your car from the terminal. It's not <laughs> a mile away. It's nice. Yeah, always, always very good experience anytime I fly out of Augusta Regional Airport. Well, we appreciate it. It's so wonderful. Hey, Herbert, one of the things that we do is we take phone calls during the show. You want to let's do one? Sure. Let's do it. We're going to a caller. And we welcome you to the CNC Auto Show. We have Ron. Ron, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Uh, enjoying your show this morning. Uh, one thing come to mind that uh, it's always kind of baffled me about the aviation. It, uh, I guess the most critical part, other than the wings on a plane, is the wheels. Uh, at what speed are some of those, uh, say, a F-16 is touching ground do they is it a hundred miles an hour or a thousand miles an hour well i can tell you the aircraft that i worked on many years ago i worked on the f4 phantom and they had a landing speed of roughly about 180 now of course no doubt these guys here uh, know a huge amount more about all of that than i know so anything i mentioned don't say that that's a, a definite thing but I do know that um, that aircraft that I worked on was about 180 aircraft that I used to fly. I used to fly a Bonanza, and I yeah, I think I had a barrier speed of like 90 knots, uh, roughly. And so it, it depends on the aircraft as the landing speed that they have uh, that they come in at. And of course, that all has mm -hmm. to do with the stall speed and the other other things that they'll. Um, that they look at on landing, but I will tell you that's a very precise measurement. The, the, now I used to vary a little bit. Well, These guys here are dead on the money. On it, it's like a machine as they're as they're flying these things. I mean, it's everything. It has to be one hundred percent precise uh, as they're as they're uh, turning downwind, as they're on final, as they're landing. Everything's dead on it. Uh, so great question. Well, do do they? Do they have a special department just for wheels and balancing? I can only imagine uh, you can't have a uh, unbalanced wheel uh -huh. on a jet uh, that's capable of those speeds landing. Mm -hmm. uh, is it something that uh, spills over into the commercial car balancing? Uh, I just can't imagine those wheels on these jets having lead weights. Right. Well, on, on the aircraft, what I did when I worked on the F-4 is we, I would see a tire that was worn. I would uh, order a tire, and it, when it came out, it was ready to roll. I didn't have to, we didn't have to ask any questions. It was just ready to go on the aircraft. So it was, a, it was a mounted already. Yeah, it was mounted done. So I wouldn't be able to tell you what they had did up to that point. Uh, but I do know that you're absolutely right. The tires have to withstand a huge amount of heat. Uh, the uh, the balancing has to be good because anytime you have something spinning at that fast, 
it has to be balanced correctly. And, and it goes from mm -hmm. not spinning to spinning <laughs> well, fast, it, real fast. It's the reverse of a burnout every time it lands. Yes. <laughs> I know when you ever see the pictures, uh, I used to live close to the Atlanta airport, and sometimes uh, we'd take a ride out there to watch them land and take off, and they would, uh, you would actually see the tire smoke when they hit the ground, and I'm assuming that's the friction just burning rubber from that tire being yeah. static. And then, it's, it, to me, it's amazing to me that these things even hold together. You know, we got uh, a quick something minute. Something like a, a C-130. Ron, we got a quick minute. That's a great question that we can ha ask Herbert. Herbert, do they, after a period of time, have to remove a certain amount of rubber from the runway? We do, yeah. And um, for the... We usually do it about once a year or so, but uh, it just depends on the amount of um, operations that you have at a particular airport. And, and there's, there can be environmental issues as well, you know, depending on the, the weather in a particular airport and the, the, the type of surface, whether it's a concrete or a, an asphalt runway. But yeah, we do have um, commercial companies that come out to airports and, um, and do that for and us. Clean and clean that rubber off. Right, and there are also systems that, um, that test the, the, the friction of the runway. Right. Herbert, I sure do appreciate you being here with us, answering yeah. questions. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations on right. a great event. And, Ron, we appreciate it. Uh, appreciate the call. We're going to be taking a real quick break. Kick, oh, kick the tires and light the fires. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> hey, thank you, Ron. Okay, we'll be right back after this. Hey, hey. And we are answering air show questions, car questions, and we are here with Chris Dorato, and he is answering questions having to do with the air show, and he can uh, he can give you a a, a great update on some of the thing on, on how you can get tickets to the air show, some of the things that they'll be doing in the coming uh, months having to do with air shows uh, around. The, um, mention again some of the uh, the website that people should go to if they're interested in attending an air show. Well, specifically this one, uh, the best one to go to is AugustaAirShow.com. Um, so, and again, <laughs> emphasizing, stressing, all capital letters, exclamation point. Um, you need to get your tickets in advance uh, online. And if you're going to come out either today or tomorrow, Sunday, uh, at Augusta Regional Airport, uh, no tickets will be sold at the venue. So, um, but AugustaAirShow.com, uh, um, you know, this is, uh, if you're interested in some of the other destinations, I, I mentioned them earlier, but, uh, you know, the ones that are forthcoming, Ocean City, Maryland, the middle of June, uh, New York International Air Show, the end of June, and then we uh, wait until October for Peachtree City, the Atlanta Air Show, and also the Orlando Sanford uh, uh, air show in Orlando Sanford Airport. So uh, you can go on air dot show uh, on on the tour site and uh, get tickets for those for those respective shows. Fantastic. That way, for those listeners who may be listing uh, in a different area than the Augusta area, they're not able to make this show. Go to air dot show tour, and they will be able to look and find the air show that's closest to them. Get a date. And I imagine they'll be the same way you'll need to buy your tickets online. That's always the case. Uh, you know, we always prefer that, obviously. Uh, and, you know, so we don't get overwhelmed <laughs> yeah. at, uh, here at the show site. So, uh, you know, that's always the preference. Get, get them in advance. Chris, you want to let's take a caller? Sure. Jim, what do you I, think? I think it's time. It's time? <laughs> All right, let's go for it. Let's go to the next caller with the CNC Auto Show. What can we help you with? Welcome to the CNC Auto Show. Hello. Yes. Welcome. Yes. This is James. We can, can barely hear, hear you. Yeah, we we're not able to hear you very well. All right. How about now? A little bit better. Okay. What can we help with? All right. I've got a 2019 Nissan Kicks. Every time I put it in reverse, it says 
system off. And I don't know what that means because everything works. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you, uh, <laughs> it's obvious. You got a system off. <laughs> Yeah, well, what could, I know, but what could he, he He's a big help, isn't he? <laughs> I just thought I'd help you out there. <laughs> All right. Um, now, system yeah. off, uh, that, um, that should mean that something having to do with the computer system has shut itself down because it sensed a fault, and because of that fault, it has uh, it's disabled something. Now that could be anything from cruise control. That could be to, to uh, a lot of other areas. But I think there's going to be more to it than that part, Jim. Yeah, let me just back up a little bit. Did you say this only happens when you put the car in reverse? Only in reverse. So could it be that he has a backup sensor or, or some camera? Box? Well, camera you'd see visually right away wasn't working, but you might have those little sensors on the back of the bumper sometimes that signal if you get too close to something. But I don't know the model car. Let me chat with Brad. Hold on. Hey, get, Brad. Get our expert team over here. Uh, he's not going to do it. Uh, he he works with the Nissans on a regular basis. He knows a huge amount of, about the Nissans. But I, I wouldn't be able to really give you an exact answer on that. I will tell you that the next step is going to be to check for trouble codes stored in the computer system. And, and also, whatever, if he's got an electronic or paper version of a manual, and if you can go to the instrument panel display, find the key for that particular message, it's, it may do as you say, Aaron, say, well, okay, it means you've got something that's not working. But it may list those possible ones. And if it's specifically to reverse, it'll tell you at least where to begin. But yeah. still, diagnostics to resolve it might still be in order. And then the other option there, James, would be if you're in the Augusta area, we'd be glad to do it. You bring it by a shop. If you're not in the Augusta area, uh, find a shop that you have a relationship with. Go by and say, hey, this light's on. What do you think's going on? And they may plug a little code reader under the dash and say, yeah, you have a code this, that, or the other. And it may be something. It, it really is not sounding like something that's going to cause you a major issue. It's doing it only in reverse, yeah. saying system off and just a display. And, and, what, um, and which, which model 2019 Nissan is it? SV. Okay. SV. Yeah. Well, that's the route that I would go, James. I'd shoot with that, shoot for that, and uh, just have, just go by a local uh, shop that you got a relationship with. Let them take a look, and um, and they'll be able to let you know what's going on. Great, great call, and I appreciate well, that. Well, I use your Rice Bell Road. Oh, okay. Well, shoot yeah. by there. John Ryan will be able right, to thank you to fix you up. Okay. We appreciate the call. Uh, number to call eight hundred two two four nine zero nine zero. Chris. Um, the, uh, tell us a little bit about the diamond, uh, from what I understand, they have the diamond remove, uh, maneuver that the Thunderbirds fly, and that's 100 feet off the ground. It's a, it's a four-ship formation, and, uh, you know, they, again, uh, it's amazing what they do. Um, you know, they, they fly tight and, uh, in a, and literally in a diamond formation. Um, and it, it's uh, some of the stuff that they they do in, in terms of the circle maneuvers and um, and high speed passes too. They'll do high speed passes and and, and that formation, and then the solo jets. I mean that they they're coming at each other at, at such high rate of speed and from either end of the of the show footprint. So uh, and then of course they will get into they'll do a six uh, a six ship where it's a a, a delta formation. So uh, you gotta have to come out come out to the show. <laughs> Oh, and we'll be right back after this. And we are back with you with the CNC Auto Show. I'm Aaron Clements and co-host Jim Pate. And we have a very special guest with us now. We have Steve Travers. And Steve, what do you do? So I'm the uh, non-commissioned officer in charge of the Special Operations Command Parachute Demonstration Team, the Paracommandos. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll, be, uh, we'll be parachuting in, bringing in the American flag and the POW flag, uh, opening the show for the air show. That is an amazing thing. Uh, how did you, um, what got you interested in, uh, in jumping out of airplanes? 
So uh, initially when I joined the Army, I was a U.S. Army Ranger uh, in a air, uh, the Special Operations Unit, and we, uh, we do static line jumps, so we jump out at a low altitude with a parachute that you can't really control. But I so started jumping in 2009 uh, with the Army, and in uh, 2012 I started skydiving on my own, and that kind of led to, uh, I skydive on my own civilian for a few years, and then I was... Uh, it kind of snowballed from there. I was the uh, regimental liaison on USASOC, so the U.S. Army Special Operations Command uh, parachute team, the Black Daggers. And then I, uh, once I was done with that assignment, I was a military freefall instructor. Uh, so I pretty much taught people how to skydive in the military. And then because of those two jobs, I was recruited to get this position as uh, the NCOIC on this demonstration team. So you took so, it to the max. I did. I did. <laughs> I, uh, I dove headfirst into it. Uh, you know, it was my passion. Uh, huh. It's, it, it's what, I, what I like to do. And then I was fortunate enough to uh, get several jobs doing it. I'll ask my question first, and then I know Jim's right behind me. What altitude do you normally jump out of? Uh, so for shows, we typically jump out around five or 6,000 feet. Um, it's not uncommon to go up to 13,000 feet. That's kind of like the rule of thumb for a high altitude jump. But for shows, um, you can't really, the crowd can't really see us that high up, so we like to get out a little bit lower, uh, deploy our flags so the, the crowd can actually enjoy it. Jim? Curious about the uh, makeup of your crew, your team that, that dive, and that they, they don't all come from the Army, and, and where do they come from, and where are their qualifications uh, merited and determined? So um, being SOCOM, being the Special Operations Command as a whole, we encompass all four um, um, different branches of the DOD. So we've got Army, Air Force, Marine, and Navy. And it's all the different Special Operations components within those branches. So we have team members. Uh, we don't have any Navy SEALs right now, but we, we can have Navy SEALs. We've got MARSOC Raiders from the Marines. We've got Air Force SEER. PJs and CCTs, and then a U.S. Army uh, Special Forces Green Berets and Rangers. So when they're when they're with you uh, as a group, they've already got obviously a fair amount of diving experience. Do they have to have additional training to become uniform in what you do as the hybrid of, of individuals that they are? Yes, absolutely. So um, usually in special operations as a whole, you go through military freefall school, that school that I just mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. um, and you get your basic training and then you go to your units and do additional training and additional jumps. Uh, to be a member on the team, you have to have a minimum of 100 jumps and then um, we start to train you from there. Uh, as there are different levels of demonstration jumps um, that require different jump numbers. So an open field demo uh, such as this, you need to have a minimum of 200 jumps and additional training in demonstration jumps. So we like to get people with 100 jumps and then we kind of train them up for that, that additional 100 jumps and then they're able to do jumps like this. And then for pro uh, demonstrations at uh, NFL games or MLB games, some you know a stadium jump, you have to have a minimum of 500 jumps. That gets a little trickier. It does. There are a lot more factors that go into it. Open field demo, pretty safe, nice and open, not a lot of hazards. You know, you start to get into a stadium, you're jumping into a city, you've got people, the stadium, utilities. Wires. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot going on when you get into a stadium jumping. Yeah, yeah. Like a, they call it, have a network of antennas out here not far from here. They call it spider web because there's so many guy wires and so forth. So. Yeah, we stay away from those. <laughs> <laughs> well, how fast are you going as you're, as you're, at, at, after you jump? How fast are you traveling? So uh, it's about 130 miles an hour, depending on the heavier guys go a little bit faster, the lighter guys go a little <laughs> bit slower. But around, it's kind of 130 miles an hour. Oh, excuse me. Uh -huh. uh, 130 miles an hour is about terminal velocity for the average person. Do you still get that same excitement each time you jump? Absolutely. Or, you still do? Every time. Yeah. And, you know, doing <laughs> demonstrations add a, adds a little bit more of a, that uh, excitement factor to it. it definitely. And then doing the prorated yeah, demos. Got to be a little softer than that first civilian skydive you Absolutely. Did. That, yeah. that was different. I don't really remember that one. It was just kind of, you know. It's one of those adrenaline kind of takes Just blocked over. out type things. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the mm -hmm. training, I'm sure, makes you a lot more comfortable. But, uh, it, but. Uh, but that thrill that you still when it's you're It's still falling through the air, man. Yeah. Yep, it's Train still fun. <laughs> and we want to put on a good, safe show. You know, that, that's always a factor, you know, that adds to that stress a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. you want to make sure everything's safe. You want to make sure everything, everybody's having fun and you're putting on a good show for the, mm -hmm. for the crowd. And the uniformity that's required, because we understand you're going to come in with flags and mm -hmm. so forth. If you're di diving by yourself, that's one thing. But now you've got a different weight, folks, as you're saying. There's got to be ways to manage all that. So that really got to add to it. Yep, and that's why we practice a lot at our uh, drop zone in, in uh, McDill and in uh, Zephyr Hills. We do a lot of practice jumps to make sure that everything's perfect before we go out and do shows. So as you're diving, and in, in, let's say you want to go faster, you want to go forward and faster, uh, what do you do? 
So there's a technique, it's called tracking, and uh, it's high lift tracking. So when you're falling belly to earth, you know, your arms are out here, your legs are, everything's neutral and you're going straight down. But if you want to move forward, you can actually put your hands behind you or to the side and point out your legs and you'll actually get forward movement across the ground. It's called high lift tracking. Yeah, uh -huh. that's, that's a one way, if, we're wanna, if, I, if I want to go over there, I'll go into that tracking position and scream across the sky. Wow. How close do you get to other uh, skydivers as your, or, or your team members? As you're coming down, how close do you get together? So it depends what show we're putting on. Um, we actually can do formations where we actually link up and grab each other's hands. We'll do you know, different um, big ways or bomb bursts or you know barber poles where I'll actually grab one another and then we'll spin and then break apart and we'll actually do that high lift tracking and gain separation. But we like a, a we like a fair amount of separation when we're opening our parachutes because it's you don't always have an on heading opening and you don't want to accidentally meet one another under canopy. So that's where the big training comes in is to have an idea where those other team members are mm -hmm. as you're coming down because you don't want to go forward and there be another team member. Nope. Situation, situational awareness is key. You want mm -hmm. to really be switched on, know where everyone's at. And then. So how, how do you deploy the flag? <clears throat> so the flag, um, we don't, we're not jumping the tra traditional drop flag right now um, because some things changed and right now we're not allowed to do that uh, as a duty as a whole. Uh, but uh, we have flags that are actually in our canopies. So there's an additional line, a suspension line within our canopy, and it runs up in, uh, in the bottom of the canopy. There's actually a, a pocket sewn with Velcro, and the flag is inside of that. And then you pull it down just like a you know, flagpole, flag line. You pull the flag down, and it gets suspended between you and the canopy within your... Uh, your suspension lines. So there, so there's how many flags then? One for each? Yeah, one for each right now. Oh, I see. Yeah. So there's not a, so at one point there was a collective individual flag. Is that what you're saying? This well, there done? used to be a large drop flag. There's actually a big um, uh, pack that we had in front of us. That's what I'm thinking and about. And you dropped the, you know, 2,000 square foot American flag or POW flag, but uh, DOD regulations just changed and we can no longer jump those because you can't, you know, prevent it from touching the ground. Um, yeah. And so... We like to do that. Uh, we always had a, a, you know, a crew of five or six people out there to collect it up as fast as possible. Um, but it, it, you know, and we, it was a banner. But you know, it's an American flag, and the regulations are what they are. So, so, so it wasn't a hazard. It wasn't a challenge. It just was a respect for the flag. Yes, it's that's that's worthwhile. Yes, sir. Yep, that's worthwhile. Yep. So there's no question you have to stay physically fit to be able to do what you're doing, not only there but also as part of the military functions that you. Uh, have to be available for your your uh, you uh, st uh, work on staying physically fit all the time. Yes, sir. There's a standard in the military, and the standard should be met at all times, and that's you know physical fitness is part of that standard yeah, for sure. No room for erosion of those standards in your field. Maybe someplace else there's some things going on. No, but sir. Not what you're doing. No, sir. No. Good. Good. Yeah. Well, I want to say that uh, that people like you, uh, heroes. Uh, you make me very proud to be an American. Um, I love seeing things like this. It just gives you a great feeling. I, I think that Chris mentioned the word goosebumps one time. <laughs> it does when you see things like the flag deployed as, mm. uh, as a person's coming down. It, may, it just makes us all very proud. And also want to say how much I appreciate you uh, taking the time to sit down and talk to what us and for being here and your team members for yeah being here. our pleasure we, we appreciate oh man dang i just dropped the thing that's all right that won't hurt anything <laughs> we just uh yeah I, I we appreciate the support we love coming out here i mean this is our job we love to get out spread the word and uh just meet the community and um it's it's great we love what it. time what time will you be jumping well uh, we should today pending weather we'll be jumping at 11 30. Clouds are a little low right now, so it might get pushed to the right a little bit, but the 1130 is the goal right now. So your team will be one of the ones that starts the show. Yes, sir. Uh, today Red Bull will be starting, but tomorrow we should be starting the show. Uh -huh. then, yes, will, sir. You, will you have more than the one uh, dive you're talking about? No, we'll just do one one every day. Yes, sir. Well, okay. For, yeah. So did, uh, so that all our listeners know, will you, as you jump, will you kind of wave toward the one so we'll know which? No, he's not <laughs> going to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll wave. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll, today, sure they'll see today I'll be the first one coming down. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll know yeah. then. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. I'll have the American flag today. Hey. Well, well Steve, good. I really do appreciate you being here. We'll be yeah. looking for you to be the first one 
uh, coming down, and we so much appreciate you. Sure, being the in, the insight you can give that you can't just read on the show notes and so forth. So when you take the chair and let us know more, that's great. Yeah, All he right. jumped right in here. This was he, he had <laughs> he no jumped. idea he, he was jumped. Be here. Yeah, that's what we do, right? right. <laughs> no, I appreciate you having me. Thank you very much. Good day. And we appreciate you being Good here. Good luck, sir. We'll be right back. You would be able to go to a site and get the information you need to find a show near you. Chris, tell us a little bit about the site and what people can do. Well, uh, again, just to be specific, the AugustaAirShow.com is what you're going to want to go to if you're seeking tickets for uh, today or tomorrow. Um, and, again, ticket availability is what it is. Uh, you know, the tickets are going fast, and you have to buy them in advance before you come out to the airport. Uh, there are no tickets sold at the airport, at the show venue. So, But if you're interested in uh, other shows that we do on the Air.Show Tour, uh, go on air.show.com, and uh, you'll see the uh, opportunities to buy tickets for uh, uh, the, other, the remaining shows that we have in Ocean City, Maryland, up in New York State, uh, and also Peachtree City, Georgia, as well as uh, Orlando Sanford Airport down in the Orlando area area so um so go online and see what's going on well the thing is we've got where we sit we're in this fbo building where there's a clear view across the field and we can see from here all the infrastructure of tents and so forth where the folks will be and as chris and i look out the window we can see the cars that must be headed in for whatever the parking operation is out there so the gates opened just about 50 minutes ago, and no precipitation. We have some clouds, but I can see that it looks like they got a pretty good crowd. And I think the, the P-51 Viper, we were looking out the window, it looks like the gentleman drove up to the building for his uh, pre-flight meeting, which is pretty neat. Put it right out the window for us to see. That's a great ride, isn't it? P-51 yeah. Mustang. Yeah, yeah that's uh, Scott Yoke, uh, nicknamed Scooter. And, and he, uh, he's... Uh, he, he came right up here. Of course, now he's going to go back to the hangar and get it ready ready to roll uh, before he goes out and performs. But, uh, but there, there's no valet parking on that. Uh, uh, no, no, I, did, I didn't see a valet parking no. ticket uh, no. handed to Took him. Took the keys with him. Yes, he did. Yeah. So, uh, But, no, you're right, uh, Jim, that they, uh, there's a steady stream of cars coming into the show footprint uh, from all different angles. So uh, we're looking to have a big crowd today. and. You know, uh, we're hoping the, the clouds move away and, uh, you know, there's no, there's no threat of rain at the moment. So that's a good thing. And uh, but we'd like to have a, you know, what we call a high show where there's a, uh, a, a clear, clear sky and uh, the, the performers don't have to uh, accommodate the clouds, shall we say? Mm, yes, because I know since some of the the Thunderbird uh, exhibition is that straight up flight, which. That's where you sort of needed some cloudless skies to get the benefit of the things like that. One of the things that they, they do do, uh, and that's a redundancy uh, with words, but the Thunderbirds have what they call a flat show if, there are, if the ceiling is a little low. So they're going to go up. Um, you know, it's just a question of some, and so in some cases, you, you know, they're closer to you. So the flat show sometimes can be a little more beneficial. But uh, obviously the preference is to do a high show so you can do that, those uh, vertical climbs, as you say, and, and, and not disappear into the clouds. And, and just to say a few words about the F-16, uh, just doing a little bit of research uh, and comparing it to some of the other planes, it seems that the F-16 without the centerline tank holds about 450 gallons of fuel. Uh, so uh, and and it can fly around 500 miles on a, a tank of fuel. Yeah, and and, and you know I, sh I should stress that the uh, Thunderbirds are based at Nellis Air Force Base out in Las Vegas. So now they're on a what they call a four-stop uh, uh, tour right now. Um, this is the third stop of, of of four shows that they're doing in a row on their way back to Vegas. Um, they go from here to Lake Charles um, for next weekend. So. Uh, so, but the, the, to your point, um, you know, when they're uh, flying across the country, which they'll be doing after the Lake Charles show, they come back across the country to do a, a show at Jones Beach in New York City. Um, so that, that will require a, a tanker scenario for those, uh, those planes to, or, or a stop someplace for those planes to make it across country back to New York City. Now, just to give people a little idea what's involved in this, uh, along with the team themselves, the aircraft themselves, 
uh, there's a lot of support that goes on to making uh, this happen. Uh, the Thunderbirds happen, and not to mention all of the other team members. And this was an amazing thing for me. I was uh, just a, uh, during our uh, – uh, just after our first hour, I had the opportunity to peek my head in there, and it was it was just a, amazing to see uh, Thunderbird pilots, uh, so uh, uh, paratroopers, just all of these people were in there in inside that one room, uh, discussing what uh, what to expect during the course of the day, and of course what to do and coordinating during the show. Well, and what you're referencing is it's called a pilot's briefing, which is done Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and, and is required by all the performers. They have to attend if they're going to fly. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a number of different uh, items that are uh, uh, on the agenda f that the air boss uh, goes through. Uh, during a period of a uh, half hour to an hour, depending upon well, how much discussion has has taken place. But um, but you know, it, it, talk about the logistics. Um, you know, we could talk about the logistics of putting on the air show in general. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts. This is not just a push button operation. But there's logistics for all the teams that arrive here, specifically the Thunderbirds. You uh, you you were mentioning about when we when they arrived here on Monday last Monday. It seems like uh, ages ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, one of their one of their not only do the jets come in, the the fighter jets, but they a C-17 arrives and that brings all the equipment and the main, maintainers and public affairs people and and the the, the flight surgeon and you know the, it's a an operation that's uh, you know soup to nuts if you will and uh, so and, and they, they this is like a tra <laughs> I call it a traveling circus. Uh, it really, but they have it down to a science. I mean, mm -hmm. it's 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 a what they do, week in and week out, and and and, and providing their mission uh, and, and of inspiration to the youth of America is uh, is it just incredible. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty inspiring to some of the folks who've maybe crested the 18 year or 21 year old mark. There's a lot of folks that are going to look back on this and see things that they uh, remember many years ago. For example, the older planes and so forth. And then anyone probably gets a real boost out of the benefits of some of these aerobatics that, that you're going to talk about with the we've been talking about with particularly the helicopters and so forth. So yeah, it's it's uh, all ages. If you come out to the show today or tomorrow or both days, if you're so inclined, um, you know, yeah, it's it's I, I can't even stress it enough that it's you look up at these planes and, and what they're doing and these these pilots, the, how they how they operate these planes. Uh, uh, it's a, it's an amazing thing. It really is. I keep using the same word, but I don't know what else to how else to describe it. Um, it's you're going to be totally thrilled by what these these folks do. Well, they are they are true heroes. The things that the the things that they're able to do. Now, you mentioned one other thing. Uh, we got about 30 seconds. Uh, you mentioned one other thing. If people cannot make it today, they will have a show tomorrow. That's correct. We'll mimic uh, pretty much mimic what we did today tomorrow. So if you can't make it out today, uh, and, and you know what? Tomorrow's Mother's Day. So is there a better Mother's Day gift for your mom than to bring her out to the Augusta Air Show? Now, that's a marketing person. There. Sorry, I had to work there. Very in. good. <laughs> that was great. Okay. Uh, we are, wait, please prepare your seats for landing. And thank you for flying with the CNC Auto Show. I also want to give a big thank you to our co-host, Jim Pate, and our show producer, Mason Rogers. And thank you all that tuned in, called in. And, Chris, we want to give you a very special thank you for being here and give us all the updates that you gave us. It was a pleasure yep. and uh, glad to be here in Augusta. Yep. Jim, thank you. You betcha. All right. See you next week. <laughs>